This video looks at the trigonometric ratios for right angle triangles. In the diagram at the bottom of the slide, uh, we have a right angled triangle that's been drawn on top of a horizontal and a vertical axis. You can see that one of the angles down here is a 90 degree angle, making it a right triangle. Now remember that for all right angled triangles, Pythagoras' theorem applies. So in this picture, the x length here, or the x coordinate perhaps there, squared plus this length y, the height of the triangle, squared, will be equal to the square of this length here, the length of the ray from the origin to some coordinate, xy, a point in the Cartesian plane. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now any such x and y combination will generate an angle which we might like to denote theta. The sides in right triangles with a given set of angle measurements always appear in certain ratios. So the ratio of y to x given an angle of theta will always be the same ratio, regardless of the size of the triangle. For example, if it was this big or perhaps this big. We call the ratios the trigonometric ratios. So we have that the sine of an angle, theta, is always given by the ratio of the opposite side, y, to the hypotenuse, r. The cosine of the angle is given by the adjacent side length, x, to the hypotenuse, r. And the tangent of theta is given by the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side, y on x. So we have, in general, these equations for the trigonometric ratios for a right triangle. Sine of theta is the opposite side y divided by the hypotenuse r and so on for cosine and tan of theta. Now note that because we're talking about a triangle that's right angled, the hypotenuse is always bigger than any of the other two sides. So x and y will always be less than, or in the extreme case, equal to the hypotenuse length. So we can say that sine theta which is y over r, and cos theta, x over r, their values will always be less than or equal to 1. Let's have a look at this example. We're given this picture where we have some point in the Cartesian plane here, which would have coordinates 5 and 3. And we're asked to calculate the length of the hypotenuse, that's this line here, and calculate the sine, cosine, and tangent of theta. Well, the length of the hypotenuse will be easy enough. That's just given by Pythagoras' theorem. The hypotenuse will be equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 3 squared. 5 squared is 25, and 3 squared is 9. So that gives us the square root of 34. And it's perfectly fine to leave it as that, or if you like, you could say that that's approximately equal to 5.8. Now for sine, cosine, and tan of theta, we need to remember that sine of theta is y over r, that's the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Cos of theta is x over r, and tan of theta is y over x. And then it's just a matter of putting those sides and their length values into these equations. So, sine of theta is y over r. Remember that y was three, and r, the hypotenuse, was the square root of 34. And we can leave it like that, or you can use the decimal value if you like and get an approximation. The cosine of theta then is x over r. x was 5, and again, the hypotenuse is 34. And finally, tan of theta is going to be equal to y over x, where y is 3 and x is 5. So those are the values for our trig ratios for this particular triangle. You can also use your calculator to find the values of the trig ratios. When you're given an angle, but you don't necessarily know the sides of the angle, this can be quite useful. One thing to keep in mind though, is to make sure that your calculator is in the correct mode. If you're talking about angles in degrees, you need to make sure your calculator is also showing that it's in the degree, rate, uh, degree measurement status. 
If you're looking at radian measure angles, you need to make sure that your calculator is in radian mode. Let's have a look now at these couple of examples. Maybe try this out on your own calculator before coming back to follow it through with me. Okay, so I've just opened the Windows calculator, which you can see on the screen here. Now what I've got to find in the first example is the tan of pi on 3. Now notice that there's no little circle symbol, so I can assume that we're talking about pi on 3 radians. So I need to make sure that my calculator is in the radian mode. It starts off in degrees. I want it in radians. Now I'm going to find pi divided by 3. So I look for the pi button. Divided by 3. That makes sense. And then I want to take the tan of that. The tan is 1.732. So A, tan of pi on 3, approximately 1.732. In part B, I've got to find the sine of 30 degrees. Straight away it tells me I'm looking at degrees, so I go back to my calculator, change it back to degrees, clear everything off, and I want 30 degrees, and I want the sine of that. So look for the sine button, there we go, and sine of 30 degrees is exactly 0.5. So there we go. Using your calculator, pretty much like that, uh, but of course, remember to try it out on your calculator a few times as well, so you get used to doing it with your machine. So in this video, we've defined the trigonometric ratios in right triangles, specifically the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios, and defined them in terms of the side lengths of the triangle. We've seen how to calculate the hypotenuse of a right triangle, and the values of the trig ratios for a given right triangle. We've also seen how to use a scientific calculator to find trig ratio values.